Hello and welcome to another new podcast series. This one with even less focus than Draw Toys, which is saying something to be honest, because that one uh, that one goes off the rails quickly. Uh, yes, today I am launching a new podcast series called Talk Toys, where we just chat about stuff. Basically, it's a more basic version of Draw Toys without the drawings. Um, so. It, you know, something you can put on in the background you don't actually need to be looking at the screen for. Um, however, it, uh, some more similarities with Draw Toys. I do have three guests with me. So, in no particular order, we have Tom. All right. We've got Tim. So. And Dan. All right. Uh, so, and in inverse to the first time we tried recording this, that was in reverse alphabetical order for you eagle eared viewers. Do, do eagles have good hearing? I know they have good eyesight. Uh, uh, really I, I imagine it's probably like a high range. They've pro- probably got really good high range, like hearing, but not low range because birds call in high range, don't they? So I suppose it's not like a spectrum thing. It's more of a the, the high end. Anyway, uh, <laughs> it's not about eagles today. Today's episode uh, and the topic at hand, and something I thought that would be nice and chill to start out the podcast series with, is the topic that probably everyone is covering on the internet at the moment, and that is 2020, the best of. And uh, hopefully put an echo on that as well to make it sound good. Uh, yeah, so basically we're just going to be chatting about our 2020 and... Our kind of favourite things from twenty twenty, um, because you know I, I like to I like to have a, a positive spin on things, especially given that this year has has had mild qualms in terms of uh, positivity versus negativity. I think it's safe to say. Mm. I don't want to go mm. too far into what the issue is because uh, you'll get I, demonetized. Yeah, I don't want my channel taken off. Basically, <laughs> so let's just say. Sometimes it was a bit of a poopy year. Smile, sad face, sad emoji face. Current world events. Yes, due yes. to current world event, we are not happy with the situation. Uh, right, but yeah, so basically I've tasked everyone with coming up with a few of their picks for favourite blank of the year. However, I've also added in a few other categories, which is the favourite blank that you experienced this year. So... To give you a bit of a um, bit of a demonstration of this, I'll just reveal what the first categories are, which is the best game of the year. But as a follow up, the category it is the best game you played this year. So the reason I did this is because um, I've not played a massive amount of games that came out this year, mm. and I thought, to be honest, I think it's outweighed by the amount of games I've played this year. So I thought, well, it's nice to just have a chill chat about what we've done this year anyway so um but having said all that preamble and setup there was no kind of unnecessary let's jump straight into it so lads i have tasked you all with our first category which will hopefully be on screen right now which is the best game of 2020 um so to qualify for this obviously the game has to have come out this year basically uh so, shall I go first? Go um, yeah, 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 go right. for it. So, my game of the year, the, the game I've played and had the most fun with in 2020. Do you have a drum roll? Uh, no, I, I don't have that much technical knowledge, to be honest, Dan. I, I'm not going to put a I'm drum roll. Jesus fans. Christ, Dan. <laughs> this isn't industrial light and magic. I'm not going to sort of spend months on this. Uh, no, <laughs> my... <laughs> My favourite game of 2020, and I suspect may actually be one or two of your guys' pick as well, so I'm not sure, is Phasmophobia. Ah. Uh, So I'll give a quick rundown for those that don't know. Phasmophobia is a PC, I think, exclusive game at the moment. Uh, It's in early access as well. I'm fairly sure it's only (laughs) available on Steam. But Phasmophobia is, generally speaking, a first-person ghost hunting game. Uh, I've I've put up an image of like the the box cover or whatever on screen here, but yeah, I think overall, uh, and I don't need to tell you guys because you three have been the one I've been playing around thirty hours of Phasmophobia <laughs> with at the moment. But uh, 
it's been an incredibly like fun and quite addictive multiplayer game i think i mean what can be said about, about it it's just it's like it's already like in my eyes a classic um um just and the thought of it as well because who would have thought right going around trying to figure out what a ghost is and then get out would be a, such an awesome game you don't even kill it that much is yeah that's what i think gives it its good balance because if it was just uh you get away from the ghost it wouldn't be as scary it kind of makes mm. you put yourself in scary situations so you can do better at the game which i think is why it's done so well i think what yeah. i quite like about it it's essentially in a sense a detective game in a yeah. weird kind of way yeah. because it, yeah. it's all evidence building there's a lot of problem solving in fact um, the only way you can quote unquote fight the ghost is throwing down a crucifix or putting salt down and hoping it gets caught and runs away like the there's no fighting it at all it's just evidence gathering which is really fresh for a multiplayer game i think and you have mm. to rely on the um most important power of all the power of teamwork that is very yeah. true as well. Uh, yeah, I, I think the thing it is. Sorry. I, I was going to say, the thing is, there's been loads of um, ghost games. Um, obviously, one of my favourite ones, I remember, was that playable demo of... Uh, well, it was just called PT. Um, playable tutorial or something. But uh, there's loads of games like that now where the ghost just hunts you and you've got to avoid it. This, the detective work, as you said, is stellar. Absolutely I, stellar. I think what I quite like about it as well, so <laughs> I'm going to make a comparison I'm assuming no one has ever made in the history of ever. This, so this is a reference you're not going to get either, but basically Phasmophobia has unironically kind of like turned a multiplayer game a general multiplayer game into like a spooky version of an anime called milky homes where four anime girls have the power of sherlock holmes but each have like a different variety and they end up working as a team why are they milky i don't know that's the name of the anime I, i've i've never oh, seen it but i've seen i've seen a, i've seen an interview about it um oh but yeah but <laughs> basically, I'm I'm sure there's other there's other comparisons I could have probably made there. But it's... I can think of two reasons they might be milky. <laughs> uh, I but I don't want to go into it because I really like having a channel on YouTube. So, uh, <laughs> but what I quite like is the fact that over time we all developed our own like specialization in terms of ghost mm. yeah. hunting. In that, yeah, it just became a natural thing that like. I'd be the spirit box guy. Dan would be the EMS uh, reader guy. EMS. And like, EMS. E EMS. Yeah. EMF. Um, oh, yeah. E no, EMS is shipping from Japan. Never mind. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, but it's... Um, I yeah, know, it... Everybody have their own, like, duties. Like, I was mainly, well, the camera guy. Um, yeah. yeah. But it doesn't tell you what they are. You kind of have to figure it out for yourself. Like, you just kind of fall There's into no... the role. Which is great. I will say, even though, because uh, at the start you have to do uh, like a like a bit of a, a, a training, which doesn't take too long, but really the entire time the the game doesn't really hold your hand at all, no. which I really no. like about it. It's like it just throws you in, and you're like, right, figure out for yourself. And even uh, even in the tutorial. Uh, the ghost that's generated in the tutorial is random. It's not setting you up to get a specific ghost. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it was kind of hard to get into initially, but after a little bit, we got into it. I think um, because, Rid, this was, I, on my, I'm not going to go into it straight away now, but I picked three games, uh, but I was going to, uh, like put a preamble on this. It's not technically out. Um, yes, phasmophobia. It's yeah, early, it is still in early access. But the fact that I was because I was saying this as well. Like I was going to say this before I'd say my game of the year. But the fact that it's early access and we we're all thinking of putting it on best game of the year. I mean, mm. Red Red, you already put it on. That's a testament to yeah. how good mm. it is. And um, to be honest, whilst whilst it is early access, basically my 
criteria for game of the year is so long as it's a game in in a playable state that isn't just a demo basically uh mm. so we yeah. can cross out cyberpunk and <laughs> oof, <laughs> we'll i'm sure we'll get onto discussions of that in a bit um mm. but yeah right let, let's move on who would like to nominate their game of the year next all right i'll i'll go ahead okay Okay, this was genuinely tough. Uh, there was a couple of games that I really, really liked this year. Uh, Ghost of Tsushima, that was a really good uh, PlayStation 4 exclusive. Uh, Doom Eternal, I really enjoyed, but I, I'm going to shock you guys, because I was was going to say Phasmophobia, but then I thought, well, it's early access, so what I'm going to put instead right, is Animal Crossing New Horizons. Ooh, now that was actually second on my list, so we, we've done a lot of swapping, I imagine. Mm. It's weird because I, 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 I didn't pl- play loads of it. Like, like I wouldn't say it was hundreds of hours in, but uh, I will say, you know, during the st- uh, uh, the dramatic events, our of current this social year, and current... Uh, world. Yeah related situation yes that was one of the uh first games um i played and it uh it was a good distraction and it was and because i think that was the actually that was my first animal crossing game uh i mean i did have the phone there was one that you had on your ah, phone, pocket camp uh, pocket yes. camp that i played but uh what i really liked about animal crossing was it's Right, what do you do? Um, yeah, you just fish, uh, chop some trees down, make make a bridge for animals to cross, you know, uh... Uh, catch, catch, you know, uh, some fossils, no, dig some fossils. Uh, and, and all the characters are really, like, cute and chilled. It's just a really relaxing game. And, and for me, that, that, that was just a, a great game throughout this year and the fact that you could like you know you're doing one thing and then and then you've you know basically you capture all the fruit and and then that once you've done that that's like right well what you gotta do it tomorrow now to get all the harvest all the other fruit you know it's a it's a day by day kind of game and uh it, it was a little bit of motivation really so yeah definitely and uh yeah i and I, I'm, I'm quite shocked myself that I put this up of Game of the Year. Uh, but honestly, yeah, Game of the Year. Yeah, I'm uh, as I said, it was second place for me. I was torn between the two, but uh, I mean, I've I've played I've played the Wii Animal Crossing and the 3DS one. Uh, so City Folk and uh, n- no uh, New Leaf. That's it. But yeah, honestly, I think this is probably the best Animal Crossing yet it's yeah uh... i'll give them credit as well in terms of updates they have continuously updated it with new features you know they added yes. diving and they're always bringing very interesting festivals to the game yeah definitely. um which you know gives you something extra to do uh there's what? plenty going on basically my favorite imagine... thing my favorite thing sorry is you can visit your friend's islands and it's it's great because each island no no two islands are the same like mm. like because uh, i remember like oh i i can't wait to visit uh red or tim's and then i uh, you check their island and you're like oh my god look what they've done to the place so then you're like hey hey guys come to my island and i just flunked like a giant gods uh godzilla <laughs> a part of it though you can like take ideas from people and like yes that, like, yeah, yeah that's another thing you're like Hmm, I'm gonna renovate this area. I think and, as and well. It, it kind of really benefited from the time it was released because yes. the thing about Animal Crossing that really cements it as a really interesting game is the kind of sense of routine it gives you. And I think at the point it came out, obviously everyone had kind of lost their routines. Yes. So the fact that it kind of gets you back into a routine in the way of like, right, I'm mm. gonna log on today to see if my tree's grown, you know, to see if I got enough money to build my bridge or whatever. So it really kind of, I think, helped people a lot in a, in, a, in a way to kind of get that back in their heads. So 
Yeah, I think it's really, really so good time. It's kind of the perfect storm as well because I think this. I mean, th- while the three DS one was kind of big, that launched twenty thirteen or something, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think this one is perfectly in step with the fact that because everyone was online more, mm. it kind of s- it created a bit more of a worldwide community as well because like it's, re- it's really wholesome. Yeah, and yeah, like because I awesome. I'd often come across like videos of like, oh this guy's recreated like Shibuya in Tokyo mm. or, on his Animal Crossing. It's like. I, I literally would have never conceived of that. That is, like, insane. And, yeah, it, it's just cool to I, see, you know. I mean, I just thought of a weird... When you were mentioning that, I thought of a weird comparison. It's kind of the Pokemon Go of this year. Yeah. Um, yeah. Po- it was it's was a bit of a phenomenon when it came out. I, I know I had problems getting it because I couldn't buy a Switch. They yeah. were sold out everywhere because oh, yeah. everyone was buying them. Um, but it was like that big community of like adoption of a game again, uh, which I think we last felt with Pokemon Go and didn't really add anything since I, apart from Animal Crossing. I also liked uh, like you can um customize uh and make your own like prints so you can put them on flags, you can put your designs on for posters on your wall and you can put them on uh, your clothes as well so which led to a whole load of like corporate like bodies using animal crossing <laughs> to advertise things <laughs> which was a weird phenomenon i still see today i was looking at something the day on um on, on i think it was youtube or twitter and it was like an advert from like i think it was something like hellman's mayonnaise or something really <laughs> weird like that what? it was just like don't forget to um download this print for Animal Crossing, and you can use it in your game. And it's just That's weird, I, incredible. There was, there was. I think that crescent though as well a bit. Uh, it was you was during the US election. I know that. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Nintendo had to go at one of the campaigns that was you was there basically. Oh my god. Oh wow. Yeah. One other thing before we uh, move on to the next person, but I will say one of the coolest mashups, right, was uh, Animal Crossing and Doom Eternal uh, on the same day. And yeah, uh, th- uh, that's the thing. I was going to say Doom Eternal is also very good. It's the. I, I enjoyed Doom 2016, but Doom Eternal, ah, oh, so good. But mm. I got to hand the. Uh, the uh, the the awards to uh, Animal Crossing, so there we go. Nice, right? Who's who would like to present theirs next? Okay, yeah, I'll I'll jump in. So my pick, I kind of picked because I anticipated what you guys would pick. I knew that none of you guys would pick this one, and also it is a fucking fantastic game. So I'm going with Final Fantasy VII Remake. Oh, yeah. I am not surprised. <laughs> no, I know you wouldn't be surprised. Now, the thing about it is, it's not a perfect game. There's, it, it is somewhat flawed, but the things it does well, it does so well that I think it deserves to be on the list. Firstly, yeah, yeah the best thing about it in my in my mind is how it kind of turns the ideas, the, the the whole idea of remakes and remasters on its head, without spoiling too much, because I know none of you have played it, um, it just there's when people started talking about the idea of a Final Fantasy VII remake, I think what they wanted was, let's just remake it was scene by scene, Final Fantasy VII, and put it on new gen consoles, and they haven't done that at all, <laughs> and the other big criticism that it had from people was the whole episodic release thing. Everyone was like, oh... Because mm. it's only know, just a cash Midgar. grab. It only Midgar, gets to Midgar. Yeah. But, <laughs> again, after finishing the game, I can see exactly why they've done that, and I agree with the fact that they've done that. Mm. Firstly, because <laughs> the game looks beautiful, there's quite a lot of content. They, they, there could be a little bit more content, I guess, but saying that, what they have put in is a lot. And the fact that it everything just looks so beautiful and there's so much different things you can do that kind of make sense that it come out in like an episodic way. But also it makes sense from a story standpoint, which uh is hard to talk about. But 
once you get to the end of the game, you kind of have that shock moment of, oh, right, okay, that's why they've done it, and this is where they're going to go from here. They've missed yeah. out on a few things, like, um, like part of it, I feel like, could have had more things to do. I, I know that sounds kind of vague, but thinking back to, like, the original Seven, there was more exploration and it had like you know, a world map kind of thing and this is less of that so I can see why it's square sized in that but apart from that everything else was, was absolutely stellar well, like, isn't... the amount of detail they put into like each part of the world and like expanding it is phenomenal like because they've expanded a bit more of the characters like isn't Tifa uh, plays a big much bigger role in this Tifa played a big role anyway but characters like Biggs and Wedge and Jesse play a much bigger role yeah, I um, I was, I okay, well, I, I've I've not played the only part of it I've played is the demo they released, mm. but um, yeah, fr- from what I've heard, they mentioned like Biggs and Wedge quite a bit, and I was like, what? I, why are you guys talking about them? Like they did nothing. What? And yeah, uh, it's, I, I'll I'll will say one thing. Having played the demo, I really really dug how different the gameplay was for each character. Yeah. 100%, which I makes think... it really fun, because mm. obviously Gareth, Barrett's got his gun, Cloud's like a regular sword fighter, Tifa's punching people, Aerith's all magic and stuff, so even though it doesn't play like a old-style style RPG yeah. that some people wanted it to, I think it does a good job of still maintaining that like difference between characters. Well, yeah. Don't they have a choice? Like, uh, like, you can, at the start, have like a certain style that's kind of old-school or modern yeah. or yeah, there's like a basically a mode where you don't run around yourself as much and you use the commands more. It's still not like exactly like an old RPG, but I can see why they put it in. I don't think it's more, much point in using it to be honest. I can see why they put it in to like yeah. use people, but the new style is so much fun that I don't see why you wouldn't want to. Yeah, try. I I'm gonna uh, uh, basic. I I I kind of agree with this because like I. Uh, kind of jumping off topic but I, I i'll be really quick about this like so i i got the new crash bandicoot and you have the choice of playing retro or modern and honestly the game is so hard i put it on modern and you know i, I might get a lot of hate hate for that it's like oh how dare you but it's just i i it's much more fun having mm-hmm. a modern without with with all the lives and stuff, so yeah, I kind of agree that you know sometimes modern can be a good thing, but it's it's there for fan service, really, isn't it? Yeah. And speaking yeah. of fan service, the other thing it absolutely gets right is the music. Yes, I was I was gonna bring that up. It's basically a fucking distant worlds orchestra. Oh, like times ten. And <sighs> the, the most impressive thing they did in music is the kind of transition between walking mm. around and going into a battle, because obviously. Like a staple of Final Fantasy games was you went into a random battle, you played a battle theme, but and then it starts. It, but this Final Fantasy VII remake doesn't have that. Mm. Every single area has its own battle theme, which is kind of like a variation on the background music of that area. And then the kind of main battle themes from the old games, like the boss theme and the main battle theme, kind of come up as bosses instead that aren't specific ah. to an area. So it just really melds those two things together really well. And obviously the old favorites are. Very did well. it win an award uh, for like best music or something? I did at the Game Awards, yeah. Which brings me to my other game of the year, The Last of Us Two. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, oh, although, uh, ju- just saying, if uh, if Sony do want to pay me, I am happy to change my uh, opinion to <laughs> wow, Last of Us Two. Wow, all four of us said The Last of Us Two. Yeah, what wow, well price? done. Oh, wow, that's a load of the, awards. The best, <laughs> new, the best new Japanese game franchise goes to The Last of Us Two. Best indie game, best. Best oh, rhythm oh, game. Oh god! <laughs> <laughs> right. When they got two, when they were put up for two awards in one cat, they had two nominations in one Vo- cat. Voice I acting, like, I think it was. Yeah. Yeah, there, there was something up there. I don't know. Let's not get into that too much. Right. Well, as as you're contributing to the conversation, Tom, would you like to contribute your game of the year pick? Oh, right. So, well. Um, I was going to mention Phasmophobia, uh, but it's already been mentioned. So, um, that I put, I got it down to three, but I'm down to two now. We exclude that. Flip and, a coin. Uh, 
you know. Oh, I think I think I'm gonna put it down to one because I think it has more lasting appeal. Okay. So my award goes to Genshin Impact. Ooh, um, okay. Simp, simp. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> basically, a massive simp. Uh, and uh, I'll just keep contributing money to that. Who game. specifically but, um, is best girl? Before we before um, we continue, so I can have a picture uh, on screen. Um. <laughs> Safer work picture, I hope. Uh, I'm gonna go with the most border, the border, the like border touching people... safer work image I can find. Well, people like Mona, uh, I think she probably is near the top there. Okay. Mona Vampire. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll put obviously. a tasteful, tasteful picture I of Mona. Got a, I haven't got her yet, but um, it is a gacha game. Um, weirdly, in the gacha game, though, it's. Um, it's this so Genshin Impact is actually a mobile game. Uh, I think that's the main market was aiming at. Hmm. But weirdly, it is technically stunning. The game is so pretty. Um, people obviously compare it to Breath of the Wild, uh, and it has got a style reminiscent of that. Both hold, in gameplay. On, hold on, hold on. People and... don't compare it to Breath of the Wild. It has obviously taken a large amount of inspiration from Breath of the Wild. But that's obviously. not a bad thing, I think, because I think mm -hmm. incre to like Breath of the Wild is uh, as close to perfection as you can get for a game, right? And a lot of other games, like, like what's that other one uh, that Ubisoft did? Phoenix. Oh, oh. Mortals, Phoenix Rising. Yes. Yeah. Is that so it? Yeah, there's that, and there's Genshin Impact, and it's not bad for other like other video game um, developers to go, hey, I'm gonna follow this, and you know, because you, you I can agree, get it. but I think they took it a bit too far. Like, there's just too much similarities that I think. I disagree because the way of the game works is you have there are a bunch of characters and you switch between them um so in one time you have a party of four characters and um basically you switch between them and they're all different elements and they'll have all different ways of playing um for example this sword was as this pole army was as this bow was as and you can the idea is you play with all of them at once. So if you were just to use one character, you wouldn't get the most out of the game, basically. Um, right. You would not be doing a lot of damage. So it encourages uh, you to do combos and stuff. Is yeah, so so like I'll be using a air element character, what they call animo character. And I might want to mix that in with a fire character. Uh, so that I can pull off a combo and do a lot more damage. And obviously all the characters play very differently. Even the characters that use the same weapons, they play very differently. And there is, like, online, everyone talks about builds and stuff for characters in the same way as people talk about builds in MMORPGs. Um, not only that, uh, it is... A bit of a live service game as well so mm. this month now they added a big mountainous region to the game and that added a lot of content obviously any content they add is free apart from the characters uh well you can get them for free but that's a gacha game for you um so there's a lot coming and right now out of all the lore in the game there are only two major regions, and I can't think off the top of my head how many there are, but there's far more than triple that, basically. And each region is modelled after like a fantasy version of a real geographic location. Um, it, it's absolutely beautiful. So the two in the game currently is like a fantasy version of Germany, and a fantasy version of China, and specifically the Chinese region, which is called Li Hui, um, is absolutely beautiful. And 
it takes the inspiration very well. So I'm s the reason I put it above the other game that I was going to select, which was Assassin's Creed Valhalla, is because it's got a lot coming forward, and I think I'm going to be playing this game maybe even five years into the future, and it'll still be releasing content. So that's why Genshin Impact is my game of the year. Nice. I I I I can concur with a lot of. So I I've only put like ten hours or something into it. I think my adventure rank is like eleven or something. So I'm, I've I've definitely not played as much as you. But no, I I fully agree, especially with the character thing. I really dig it that it's like. It it's it's essentially kind of the the cool vo a combination of a kind of general RPG thing mixed with a team based gacha game uh, and i've played a lot of gacha games and like all the the hypest ones are always the ones like use this unit but this unit will boost him if you use it at the same time it's like yes yeah it's got Not that, only that satisfying thing. as well they um <laughs> i don't want to go on about this too much but like basically every character it seems they're adding story arcs for hmm. like quests in the game for every single character, it seems. They haven't done all of them yet. But whenever there's a new character, there's always, like, a story arc for them. So every character isn't just, like, basically, oh, this character's cute, I'll play this. They all have personality, and they're all quite unique in that way, and I really like that as well. Voice yeah. acting is great in the game as well. Uh, I play it in English, but... Yeah, it's shout out, so. shout out to Lisa's Japanese voice actress when you climb walls. Oh, 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 <laughs> All I'm saying, if uh, if you got the game, give it a try. Nice. Um, right. Unless anyone has any uh, scathing remarks to add to any of the four picks, uh, I'll move on to the next category. Cool. Cool. Right. Well, the next category. So this is going to be a bit of a quicker part, I imagine, because. It's more likely we're going to have played things that maybe the rest of us haven't played. Uh, and that is the best game you've played this year. So, as I mentioned at the start of the episode, because, you know, I, well, personally, anyway, I play a lot of games over the space of a year, and I'd say, like, less than half of them are new releases. And it's a shame to, you know, play a game and just never pass over it, especially if you really enjoyed it. So, um... Yeah, this is just any game you have played this year. Well, specifically, I suppose, a game that didn't release this year. Yeah. Um, because otherwise, technically, Game of the Year would just cover it. Unless, mm. if you don't have a pick for this one, that's cool as well. Um, but I'm going to start first. So, uh, th so the whole reason I, I did this podcast is I've got a slightly, like, weird uh, hobby of... Whenever I finish a game um, or a series of anime or a movie, I'll write it down in a list of things I did this year. As it's just like, oh, to, you know, look back. It's like, oh, yeah, I played that or whatever. Uh, and this year I did not play many games. And that is mostly due to the fact that I spent a lot of the time playing my pick for best game I played this year, which is Final Fantasy XV, uh, which I've spent cumulatively cumulatively about 80 hours in uh so far so yeah it came out was it four years ago 2016 if you like yeah i think it was um so yeah I, I i've been meaning to play it for years i finally took the plunge uh, and i went in hard for 15 because i i knew of the preparation and the whole i don't know if you guys remember but the whole multimedia thing of 15 yeah um so I, I watched the anime, which is a five-part anime. Very good. It's free on YouTube, so give it a watch if it interests you. I watched King's Glaive, which is the movie they made, uh, starring um, Aaron Aaron Paul, is it, from Breaking Bad? Interesting Jesse choice. Uh, yes, and who is uh, Cersei from Game of Thrones? Tina Hedy. There we are, yeah. So they, they were two. Oh, and, and Sean Bean. Sean Bean played. Sean Bean. Uh, yeah, how can you forget Sean Bean? He played Noctis' dad. Because of fucking course he did. <laughs> of course Sean Bean plays the one guy whose death is like big and pivotal. Of course. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, and, you know, sort of. Uh, so yeah, I, I did those. I played the games and I played all four of the DLC episodes as well. Um, and yeah, I 
really thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, I will say, I, in terms of comparisons to other Final Fantasy games, it felt very different to the point that, like, if it had been titled something like, kind of like, you know, Brotherhood, a Final Fantasy journey or something, as a kind of spin-off game, mm. I'd have completely seen it in that vein as well, because, like, it's... I mean, honestly, it feels at times more like sort of an RPG like Oblivion or something to Final Fantasy. It's sort of, yeah. you know... But, um, no, I, I I really enjoyed Fifteen. I, it, it's not a perfect game, for sure. Um, but, no, I, I, I liked it. I liked the world and stuff. And, honestly, the four DLC episodes, which technically isn't in the base game, unless you buy the complete version, uh, I thought were really, really cool. They like Prompto the, is best for you. Uh, yeah, Prompto. Oh, I fucking love Prompto. Um, also, I did eventually come to love the English voice cast. I played it in Japanese... But after I beat the game, I switched it to English just to get a feel for it. And by the end of playing the last episode, I was like, okay, fine. The English voice cast is good as well. <laughs> um, also, shout out to the fucking episode Arden, which is, oh, it's so cool. It's like a flashier version of Devil May Cry, if that makes sense. Like, it's Devil May Cry, but teleporting is a massive thing. And ah, It's just really good. I, I, I loved Fifteen. Yeah, you can fish in the game as well, and so I played, uh, yeah, there and we are. Cool, thanks, really, Dan. That's that's the main really... focus there. Not just no, no, fishing. Know, the game good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, game... yeah, if there's a fishing game, there you go. No, uh, there's like little other like mini games you have with it, and I, I whenever I think of final, because I admittedly I haven't completed it. I I, I do plan on getting round to it. Um, uh, but I I fondly remember just fishing and. It, you know, it's quite a bit of a challenge, actually. You know, and you're like, "Oh, this is harder than it looks." I, I'm going to do some more. You know, I I also got really into the chocobo aspect of the game because uh, the more you rode a chocobo, the more it leveled up and stuff, and you could take it into races. Uh, yeah, and I beat Iris uh, at the end completely without cheesing it. So not not bragging or anything. Congrats. Right, yeah. you didn't see in the fifty and. I, I don't know, I might be talking complete rubbish here, but is 15 like that versus 13 that they were talking about for years yeah. and years? Mm. It Originally, began yeah. as a spin off and turned into 15. Maybe, and I think, when... okay. Yeah, because I think from what I read, because the, the whole point, the, the characters of 15, obviously, he is the, the king, the you know, the next king in line and his three royal guards. And I think. Versus 13 was going to be they were four royal guards guarding someone who was important in the 13 universe. And then it kind of like spun mm. off. And then they realised, oh fuck, this is too big. We can't make this as like a side project. This is literally its own game. So mm. Yeah, 15 I thought was worth the wait. I, I enjoyed it. That, that is my best game I played. Year. And I know it's a, a trailer, but Final Fantasy 16 looks really good. It does. I'm quite yeah. excited. Back I'm... to its uh, high fantasy, fantasy roots. roots. Yeah, I've got high hopes. Uh, right, who would who would like to go next for their best game that they played 2020? Okay, I will. Um, so this was really tough because uh, um. There was lots of games I played uh, this uh, this year. I played a lot of Divinity 2, but I'd say the best game I played this year was probably the Souls Bomb series. Uh, so, for those not in the know, it's Dark Souls, Sekiro, uh, and Bloodborne. They're... And Demon Souls. And, and Demon Souls. Um, but uh, I got round to it. It was weird, really, because um, so wait, which game are you choosing? Well, that's the thing. I I I I, I le legit I don't know which which one to pick on this one though. So, but in the because you're going to pick, um, I'm I like a photo, so I I'd, I'd say uh, go for Dark Souls, um, because the first one. Oh no! The yes, the first one, yeah. Okay, yeah, cool. Dark Souls. Because I, I first started by uh, playing uh, Sekiro, uh, uh, and then I when I actually completed it, it's like oh my god! I 
well, if I can complete this, then I can complete the first, you know, Dark Souls. And and uh, I went and played that, and it was just a journey. All, all, the, all the Soulsborne games are like a journey. And, and uh, right now I'm playing through Bloodborne, and... I love it. I absolutely love it. And and the the, the thi- and that it's such a difficult thing to say. Oh, which one? Which which one? Because they they're all kind of very similar. Uh, but like Sekiro, there are differences between them. Like Sekiro is Sekiro and Bloodborne are very fast. They're very aggressive, uh, kind of uh, games. Whereas with with uh, Dark Souls and like Demon Souls, you're very much on the defensive. You've got your shield up all the time, um, but um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's just incredible. The bosses, uh, the, the it it doesn't hold your hand at all. I can, you know, and and the the weapons that you get and um, and and at the end of it, when you finish the game, you're just like, oh, what on earth have I did I play? You know what I mean? So, um, I know t- Tom. Tom can vouch because he's played. Oh yeah, the. So I've only played Dark Souls series. Unfortunately, I haven't got a PlayStation, so I can't play Bloodborne or Demon Souls. Um, I haven't played Sekiro, but um, so I played Dark Souls one a long time ago now. Um, I think when it came out actually, and um. What I like about the game, it's very difficult, but every time you make a mistake, uh, I know a million people have said this, but like, it's you who's made the mistake. It's not the game, except yes. maybe in Dark Souls Two. Mm, but yeah. you know, that's kind of the black sheep of the series. But it is a fantastic series, and honestly, when you like. At first, it might seem frustrating. When you get into the rhythm and learn how the, you, to play yeah. your character and come up with like a build, um, honestly, it's it's actually not that difficult uh, for me personally. And I think for a lot of people, you just need to get into that rhythm, and what, then what I, you feel like you're really achieving something. What I like about it, right, is that because I remember. Uh... The, f- the first person who, who uh, got me introduced me was actually you, Rid. You gave me a copy of Demon Souls when it came oh, out. yes. Back in two thousand and nine. I I don't know if I played it in twenty ten, but I remember you're like, oh, I found this game, uh, really hard. So you can play with it if you want. And I'm like, well, all right. And I and I played it, and I was like, oh my god, this is way too fucking hard. So I. And I just kind of gave gave up, and I I think I gave it back to you. I, I, I and then hmm. it was kind of years later, and you realize, well, no, what what you can do is you just if you grind a, f- a few levels and level up, you can or explore a different area. Eventually, when you go back to that boss, it's you can you can take them on, and it's like, oh, okay, hmm. you know, so. And and uh, yeah, they're just like, all the bosses are really memorable. Like um, the like bosses Sekiro... of the stars of the show. Honestly. Yeah, the the uh, war... that's the thing. A lot of it is like uh, drenched in atmosphere. Like especially especially in like Bloodborne, um, I will say. Um, and and you you know you hear a lot of ambient noises, but when you hear the boss, you know it's a boss. The whole like. It's like um, an orchestra playing, and you just feel really mm. powerful, and 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 well, it's, it's weird. Soundtrack, yeah. yeah, you feel powerful, but you also feel um, you get a mixture of emotions. You feel like, oh my god, can I? I, I what what on earth am I fighting? And 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 it, they get weirder and weirder the the more you play, and it's I love it. And, be interesting. Uh, I'll be interested to know what's your favorite boss in. The whole Soul series. Um, I was gonna say my, my um is partly out of frustration the first time I did it, but also it really caught me off guard. Is okay. Ormenstein Smo? Oh, yeah. When you fight them, they put two bosses at you, 
and depending on which one you kill, the other one gains the powers. Gains and extra they, power from yeah. it. And yeah, I think I I think I played that a good solid few hours before I beat it. The hardest boss I've ever fought in video games, especially the first time. It's not so I'm, bad now. Yeah, I, I for me, like some of like uh like on sign of smile was insane. Um but I'm gonna say, um I, I don't know, Bed of Chaos in Dark Souls 1 was frustratingly annoying. I remember just... Because you have to, like, run and then you have to jump without being sweeped off by its, like, uh, I don't know, tendrils and stuff. It's That was it's frustrating. Like the tree one. Yes. Oh, yeah, that, yeah, I remember that. That was frustrating. But, uh, no, for me, the hardest boss uh, so far... Like, again, I haven't... I'm still going through Bloodborne right now, so... But for, for right now, uh, I would say the hardest boss I've ever played is actually in Sekiro. Uh, it's uh, Ishin, the Sword Saint, I think I think that's what he's called. And yeah, uh, he has four phases. Ooh. Four phases, and it's... Uh, it's just insane. He throws lightning at you, he has a gun, like... Like I don't know how he'd have a gun in like uh during that time period in Japan, but hey ho, uh, well, he has a gun. Rifles were around in the Sengoku period near the yeah, but not a repeating end. pistol. Like <laughs> no, <laughs> he's like a Glock, like shooting there. You're like what? <laughs> but it's um, creative oh, license, creative license, yeah. But oh my god, that that was insane. Uh, the Guardian Ape, I would say. Uh, is an incredible boss fight because like you you take him down and you're like ah i've done like you literally chop his head off right and and then he comes back alive carrying a, his he own head and swing on you like oh my god so that's what i love about it, is that they always throw surprises at you and um and yeah i love it nice uh right who would like to go next for the best game they've played so I'm gonna <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna go with a really obvious one for my favorite game I played this year. Okay. Um, I did I did um consider choosing a couple of other ones, but because I haven't finished them, I thought I I wouldn't pick them. So I've recently started playing Yakuza Zero and Persona Five, but I'm gonna go with the game that I completed for the first time this year and only really played this year. I picked it up last year, but I only played it for like five minutes and finished it off this year. And that is Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild. Ah. Oh. Mm. It's. I know everyone says it's like one of the best games ever, but it is one of the best games ever. It's just so well made in that, like we've said about a few of the other games we've done tonight, it doesn't handhold you. It lets you kind of figure out what to do yourself. It's got such an interesting way of like carrying through the game because when I tell people... Like some people, people who don't really play Zelda, uh, and they're and they're like, "Oh, what level are you?" And I'm like, "There, there aren't any levels. You just kind of go through and do things in whatever order you want." And people get really confused by it, but I think that's like one of the best things about it. And technically, you don't even need to do any of the game's content. You can just head straight for the final boss if if, if you like. Yeah. Skilled enough, which is just nice. Insanely cool. But like the things you do do to level up, um, to, well, the things you do do to get stronger are just really fun characters are really cool um they like focus on exploration like literally you could just wander off in any direction and find like fifty thousand things to do it's the amount of detail they put into that game because i i don't know that now i i didn't pick it for this year i don't know whether i played it at the was it at the start of this year i, I don't know but i i think that that was i it's a phenomenal game they like there's um it makes you feel really smart when you solve all like the yeah puzzles. the puzzles are really well done and like the best thing about the puzzles is there's like there's not one way to sort them out because you have so many different powers you can use like different ways to do the puzzles it's not like this is how you do it so you, you do get a bigger sense of accomplishment because you might have cleared it a completely different way to the way that everyone else cleared it which and the cool. dungeons well i say dungeons but like you you kind of have to go to all these um uh what, what are the 
the well, giants. The divine called... beasts are like the big divine kind of beast, dungeons. Yeah. Yeah, divine beasts. And the cool thing about it is that you, you know, that four pop up, and you can pick either one. There's no uh, right or wrong way to pick uh, which divine beast to go to, but um, um, but they're all you know, like when all the bosses and those uh, uh, dungeons uh, are hard, genuinely yeah. hard. And there was one uh, I can't I can't remember which one, but um, uh, was it the one on the uh, like uh, gi gi no not giraffe? It was like an elephant. <laughs> There's an elephant one. Yeah, is that what you're thinking of? Yeah. Oh, oh, what's the one? Because there was one divine beast, and it was uh, that one was super fast. Oh, Thunder Blight Ganon, yeah. Thunder yeah. Blight Ganon, oh so, my god, that yeah, like took me a while to get past him. Yeah, um, but uh, yeah, uh, that's that's probably one of the best uh, Switch titles you can get, and actually of of all time, honestly, I, um, you know, I uh, my my younger sister, she played um, w w w Ocarina of Time, and she was saying, yeah, this beats. Uh, Breath of the Wild, but you know, controversial. But it's you know, it's um, I, I think I think it's a I, I, it's a great game. Yeah, hundred percent. And it's just one of the ones that keeps you going back to it. Like I didn't get bored of it at all. Generally, <laughs> looking forward to the sequel. Yes, absolutely. Next year, fingers crossed. Yeah, I've I've not played it, so unfortunately, I can't really weigh in here. Um, I just want to ask a question, actually, Tim. Um. You know why you is it? You why can't... does it suck in comparison to Genshin Impact? <laughs> <laughs> there we are. No, no. I was gonna. I was. I really like the um, what sounds like the free form idea of the game, almost like Dark Souls, where you can, uh, like chuck yourself in and go fight like very late game bosses. Mm. Um, is it possible to go and fight the last boss? Have, have people done that? Yes, like you straight can. off the you bat, you can literally. You you have to like it's very hard, but you can literally yeah. just run up and uh, pull off a confusion yeah, yeah, yeah. and just go Good to the nice. last boss. The thing you Good get basically the thing you get by going around and doing all the divine beasts is you kind of turn them back on your side because the lore is they've been turned to you know evil by Ganon mm. hundreds of years hundred years ago, and by going in and sorting them out, you kind of bring them back on your side, which means. As soon as you finish that divine beast, for the rest of the game, you see, like when you're in like the overworld, you see like a red light coming from them to the Hyrule Castle in the middle of the map, which is them basically like, taking aim at this yeah. huge beast that you have to beat at the end of the game. And each one that you get, once you actually get to the final boss, they like, you'll have like a cutscene where they like fire at it basically. Oh, it's and incredible! It'll, like, bring it, it's so cool, and it like it'll bring nice. its health down like a certain amount. I think if you get all four of them. It's not yeah. about half health when you start fighting it, which makes it yeah. much more manageable. The world feels really like, like uh, I know it's thrown a, a word a, a, a lot, but uh, immersive. Yeah, immersive. Is, yeah. Okay, right. So on to the final uh, pick for best game you've played twenty twenty, and that is Tom. <laughs> so, I don't know if you're gonna say that this one can't because I've been playing this game for years. Years and years. It's not something I picked up this year, if you get me. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, but the problem with this game is it's very hard to sell to people. So I'm going to talk about it a little bit, but not too much, I think. Okay. So my favourite game is that I played this year is uh, Europa Universalis 4. Okay. And... Uh, I'll let my hours speak for themselves initially. So I have put 1,526 hours into this game. Holy shit. Uh, it's pretty yeah, impressive. It's very replayable. So basically, um, because it's a bit of an unknown game to a lot of people, I'll explain what it is, basically. So it's, a co it's what you call a grand strategy game. So the game starts you launch the game and you get put on this map and the map is 1444 right the whole of earth in the year 1444 and they pick this year 
um, because it's around it's around the time a lot of big things were happening in the world, specifically Umra. Uh, so you could pick any country on Earth at that point, and there are a lot more countries then than there are now. Basically, we're talking it must be around six hundred or so countries you Oof, can pick. Damn! And you just click on a country. And then you're in the hot seat of that country. So you control the economy, you control the military, you control the diplomacy of that country, so you can forge alliances with other countries. And it's basically an alt history lover's kind of dream. Hmm. Because, for instance, I could pick up a very minor country in India and take over most of the known world if i wanted to uh if you play well um the smaller countries work better and there's you know there's things like they i think they picked that period because it was the end of the byzantine empire which mm. is mm. basically the last remnants of the roman empire but they're left with a couple of provinces uh against the encroaching ottomans but you could change that. You can take them over and push back the Ottoman invasion and restore the Roman Empire to its former glory. That's the dream. You could do that with literally any country on Earth. Nice. You could you could play as the Aztecs and reform your religion to be more uniform and put turn the tables on the Europeans. And launch an invasion on Europe. Now, it's am I, phenomenal. Am I correct in saying as well there was content update this year for it? Yeah, so this year they released the Emperor DLC. Now this game has a lot of DLC. Um, generally what the DLC does, it affects a particular part of the world. So they say we'll expand mechanics for countries. So there's a lot of countries with unique mechanics. For example, if you play in, say, China, if you play as the Ming Dynasty, they have a special Mandate of Heaven, which can be taken by other countries. Um, mm -hmm. Like in history, when like the Mongols invaded China and became the ruling dynasty and stuff. But this year they had a DLC which kind of focused on the Holy Roman Empire. So they added nice mechanics for them, which was pretty good. Hmm. So, yeah, that it's one of the better DLCs they released this year, actually. So uh, I've been playing a lot of that. A have lot you played um, Crusader Kings 3? Yeah, so that's another one I put a lot of time into. Well, I put a lot of time... Crusader Kings 3 came out this year. Um... And I've put a lot of time into that. I think I've put a few hundred hours into Crusader Kings 3 now. But I've also but in the past I played Crusader Kings 2. Now that plays plays similarly to Europa Universalis, except you play a specific character and not the character might be in charge of a country, but they could also be a duchy within that country. Mm. Um, also mm. a fantastic game and the best thing about it is you can you can technically transfer your save between the games ah. so you can go from Crusader Kings 3 to Europa because the time because they've what they've done is they've conveniently ended the time frame of Crusader Kings 3 about the time Europa starts ah. Europa runs from 1444 till the mid 19th century so mm. you've got all that history and all the different like innovations and stuff your technology will advance and whatnot um it's i don't know what to compare to if people have played civ yeah i don't know if any of you played civilization I played a little yeah, bit of it years ago civilization 4 i i, I played a lot yeah, it's got it's a bit like that, but it's less like arcade, it's more realistic. You're playing on a map 
Hmm. It's a grand um, strategy with like the yeah, emphasis it's a on grand. grand. Strategy. I don't know how to really sell it to people. And to be honest, I'm not gonna lie. Um, it probably took me a year or so to figure everything out. It's, yeah. If you want to learn that game, you've got to commit a lot of time to learn in that game. Uh, because there's so many little mechanics and like intertwined in the game. It's, I'm, a, I'm it's kind a of very surprised. hard point of entry. I'm yeah. surprised because I really thought you would have gone for like Mountain Blade 2. I played a bit of that. Um, it's a good game, but um, it's still in like I think uh, Europa is early a, access, isn't it? It's one I just always go back to. Yeah, yeah, it is in early access. I'm looking forward to where that goes. Uh, honestly, honestly, like massive props to the developers. Uh, uh, well, yeah, the developers of Europa Universalis, because I remember we we had chats around the time the Crusader Kings three came out. And I think I, I'd kind of like uh, I was doing something at the time, and you like mentioned some kind of DLC update or whatever about uh, Europa Universalis, and I thought you were on about Crusader Kings Three, and I was like, oh yeah, that's that's really weird that recently came out. Where's their DLC? And you were like, no, no, it's that one. I was like, but that's a really old game. That's like years ago. And like, oh, when did it come out? Now I'm trying to think. Just. This- just the fact that, like... 2013 or something, I think. Damn. Like, yeah, the, the fact that the developers not only, like, were like, ah, oh, we'll we'll trickle out some DLC for a year and then kind of leave it at that. Just so like, no, we're, we're, we're fine-tuning our game, like, seven years later. It's mind-blowing, especially... Because it's not, like, an online service game or anything. Mm. Like, you know... The only reason they really go to a new game, like with Crusader Kings, is... When the engine's a bit limited, so like yeah. it can't run the game at a sufficient speed. So like Crusader Kings Two, even on a fast PC, would tank because there was so much going on in the game. Because ah. while you're doing all your stuff with like your country, the your CPU is basically processing that. But for every single country on Earth, oof, oof, okay, so yeah. they'll all be conquering and you know doing diplomacy and trading and stuff. So it's it you do need a good PC to run it to a certain extent. I think to run it quick anyway. Um, I know on my old PC it ran a bit like slow, like it would take a long time for a year to pass in the game, basically. Hmm. Well, I think. That about wraps up our chat of games, uh, I believe, for this uh, this part of Talk Toys. So uh, I didn't mention it at the start of the episode, actually, but this is going to be broken up into smaller bits, just so they're a little bit more bite-sized. Um, and also for the fact that they're a bit more focused. For example, uh, the next part coming up, we're going to be discussing movies. But if for some reason you're just not in that into movies, or maybe for some reason listened all the way through the games one but you don't care about games we do care about movies gives you that freedom to kind of you know pick parts of the podcast as it were so that will be uh uploaded shortly after this part hopefully assuming everything goes well and there isn't a a sort of uh, an un sort of precedented nuclear apocalypse or something that occurs between recording this and editing it uh I'd hope not, anyway. Uh, yeah, so we're going to be continuing on with the podcast, but that is it for this part of the episode, as it were. So stay tuned for our discussion of the best movie and the best movie we watched of 2020. I will see you guys in the next part.